There's time for another energy saver. This time I'm going to test this one in a metal box. The text is written partly in English, partly in Spanish and partly in something like Turkish. It's just a crazy mixture of languages. It shows pictures of some appliances. It says it can save 40% of power. There's the voltage and frequency. And this one shows some picture of a household or so. So let's open it up. Here's the device in a metal housing with a connector, a fuse and an LED for indication, a cable and a spare fuse. It says DEU's energy saving technology, energy saver, enhanced smart saver. On the other side there is some technical parameter, the rated voltage, frequency and useful load of 30 not. It's 300,000 watts. 300,000 watts. That's really a decent amount of power. Does this really generate 300 kilowatts? Such a tiny box. That's amazing. And the installation is so easy. You just connect the cable, plug it in and that's it. The connector is kind of loose. There's a US plug and unlike in most of other Chinese appliances, this one has holes in the pins. So it looks more like a proper US plug. But it has a universal voltage range, so we can plug it into European 230 volts using a deadly Chinese adapter. The LED lights up and that's probably the only thing it does. Now let's test it. There's a light bulb drawing 10 watts. And when I plug it in, does it save some power? No, it doesn't. It doesn't save any power. It actually draws some power. So just like the other ones, it doesn't save anything. And it actually makes the power consumption even higher. And it also sparks when I plug it in. It also keeps a charge and the plug can give you a shock after you unplug it. It also has a metal housing but no ground connection. So it's definitely not compliant in the European Union and it's not EU's energy saving technology. What is the fuse? It seems to be 5 amps. And now there's time to take a look inside. So there's the board with a big black box as usually and few resistors, a diode and LED and that's it. So the mains comes in, it goes through a fuse, then it goes into a board and it seems to be directly in parallel with the capacitor or what this is. And there are two resistors, quite a big resistors, one diode and the LED. Almost no connections here. A double sided sticky tape holding this capacitor in place. It seems a little different than the plastic ones. Those have four tiny resistors and no diode. 
and this one has two bigger resistors and one diode. It has a nice marking on the board. Also the life and neutral are marked and it says alright. It doesn't look very safe because it slides into a metal box and the connections go very close to the box. And this one is only about one millimeter from the box. I definitely don't like this. It definitely doesn't look very safe. So if they fail to cut the wire short enough, it makes a contact with the box, which of course is not grounded, and that's really deadly. What about the magic black box? Or probably a capacitor? It's about 3 microfarads, and of course there's time to make a schematic of it. So here's the schematic and it's really not complicated. The mains comes in, it goes through a 5 amp fuse into the 3 microfarad capacitor and its discharging resistor and then it goes through a diode and a resistor and then into an LED. And when you are unplugging this from mains, the capacitor can stay charged. If you unplug it in this moment or this one, for example, there is no charge in the capacitor, but if you unplug it here, the capacitor will stay charged in this polarity. And if you unplug it, for example, here, the capacitor will be charged in another polarity. If this side is charged positive, it will discharge through the resistor, but also through the LED. If it's charged in the other polarity, where this one is positive, it cannot go through the LED because of this diode. So it will only discharge through this resistor and it takes several seconds before the capacitor is discharged down to a safe voltage. As usual, the point of this device is to save you electricity bills by compensating the inductive loads in your household using this capacitor. But the problem is that households don't usually pay for inductive loads. The electricity meter of a household doesn't measure inductive power, it only measures the real one. Because you never know how much compensation is actually needed, connecting a random capacitor is a nonsense. It's also very likely that you don't need any compensation at all. In the old days you had a lot of inductive loads, like fluorescent tubes with an inductor in series, or classic transformers, but nowadays you mostly have LED light bulbs with a capacitive dropper or switching power supplies with an interference capacitor at the input, then there is a bridge and another capacitor. So it's very likely that the power factor of your household is already capacitive and this capacitor makes it even worse. But a household doesn't pay for inductive loads, so you don't have to care about the compensation in the first place. So in my opinion it's completely useless, it doesn't save anything, it actually draws something and it can also give you a shock. It has a nice box which could be used in some project, but because it's made of metal and it's not grounded, it should only be used for a safe low voltage. You can also see the autopsy of this capacitor in my previous video. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.